Hello, all you wonderful beings, and welcome to the Free Zone. You know we are all looking for our path. We are seeking methods of ascension to build bridges to Tomorrowland. Tonight, we are going to explore the variations of you and equip ourselves for the spiritual war. The resistance will be realized when we speak the language of imagination beyond death and accept the adventure of duality. So let's get some understanding and emancipate the human species with our wonderful guest tonight, Seven Bomar. Now, Seven is one of the most diverse and enigmatic speakers of our time. He is rapidly gaining explosive recognition for his unique message, specializing in linguistics, etymology, ciphering, occult sigils, symbolism. You're going to love him. So I am so excited to invite to you tonight our special guest, Seven Bomar. Wholeness. Welcome to the show. Oh, wholeness, three minutes. Uh, definitely wonderful being on. You know, this is uh, an exciting time for me. You know, I feel like our connection here at this moment is, is unique. And, uh, and it comes at the right time, too. It's just amazing because, you know, obviously we've been up for at least five or six, I guess it's five or six years now, maybe a bit more. And then you've had a bit more run time. But, uh, you know, we've definitely been working on that same front and expanding people's consciousness and, and allowing it to do it to us, too. Meaning that uh, this is something that we're also involved in and that we're also expanding with. And we're just giving our time and our energy and reporting back to the world and saying, hey, this is what's going on uh, in the spiritual planes and the, and the consciousness beyond. And so it's just great to, to really share this moment. And I'm looking forward to, you know, just getting into some, you know, uh, you know I know you have a very mature audience. So getting into some of the, the meat, if you may, of the entire situation of the reality. And, you know, and then also really laying into something that allows us to use all of these energies and forces to our advantage uh, when we learn how to really, really work our system that we're in, you know, which is amazing. So... Yeah, and without a doubt, we have taken in so much data. I don't think there's mm -hmm. been a human being on planet Earth be prior to the 21st century that is getting inundated with the amount of data that we are. And it really makes you wonder, yeah. you know, how much data can a body hold? Yeah. But within all this data, we're still seeking the path that we want for tomorrow because we don't fully understand ourselves. Yeah, I mean, you know, the, the most important thing I would say is, is that our, our way of taking in data and information, you know, especially with the advent of language, has always been very specific. Like we, we read to attempt to learn more and then experience becomes somewhat secondary. We need to kind of read the manual first before we jump into the plane and try to fly it. But obviously the, the ancients function on more of a, a different level that what was really encased in their consciousness was the blueprint to everything and how things work. So we're kind of coming at this a different way. We're learning how things work and allowing that to expand us. And, you know, I just, these days I, I've really started noticing more and more that you, and when you look into the details, you actually get a chance to, to really understand or what we say, understand what's going on and that it really centralizes back to you and uh, asking the important questions and ask, also getting those answers. Well, finding the many variations of you is not an easy task, and especially in our cluttered world. And I find this very interesting that Lindsay Lohan, uh, one of my favorite celebrity possible mind control victims, uh, coming forward to say that ayahuasca has completely changed her life. And we are finding now that yeah. there are tools that we can use to help us find the variations of ourselves, uh, but they are hidden far away in the shamanic traditions, which are not coming into our culture at this time. But if Lindsay Lohan can find herself, mm -hmm. then I think we need to learn of these tools. And I think you're the man to teach us. Well, for sure. I mean, I think we've had a lot of teachers in, in the past uh, about this, the, what's called the biome. It is a real word. It just means basically all the flora and the fauna and all the different things living inside of this bubble. And, you know, it, it, what I would like to tell everyone, and, you know, it's kind of a no brainer, but realistically, the more that we divide, the weaker that we're going to get. But when you, if you're trying to do whether that's good or bad, you're always going to miss the mark. It's really that if existence then is when it all comes together is an infinite level of power for us to have experiences in this existence rather than it just being completely 
unidentified, overwhelming, non-charted, et cetera, then that's when we start taking what I say is the pieces of the pie or the, the pieces of the phi, because it's all about how many different variations can we actually have and still say that, okay, that's new. <laughs> Because if, if everything is coming from the same source, which we've, been able, which we've been able to prove without a doubt, how do we experience something new? So the reality is, is that we're actually doing something that, that's impossible. It involves danger. It involves ideas of, of uh, death. It involves enjoyment. It involves all the things that in uh, the energetic plane, or what's called the subjective realm, it doesn't exist as we know it because it's already made, uh, it's already been in a state of being a totality. And so in life, the more we, we get familiar with that, we call that the degrees. Like the more you understand, the more you learn, the more you fill up your vessel, then how much you can hold, because we've already seen where some people can get information and knowledge and then maybe take one of these plants and then it doesn't come out so well. They kind of come out and you know, they're just, they're abstract, they can't get a job really anymore and they don't get along with other people and you know, they have a hard time harmonizing again with the reality and then many times in, uh, we look at, um, if, if in that state, because we've all been through this kind of thing, we look at the world and we say, okay, well, yeah, it's doing something that I don't want to do and I'm not a part of. But that's still the same separation that someone who could be in the same state of mind as you, but pushing in a more uh, corrective thought would say, you know, I'm, I'm attempting to, uh, to bring us all together. We should not be separated. So what we find is, is that these are the conundrums and this reality can get very tricky with them, meaning words that mean the same thing, like, man, that's bad. And, and that means that's good now versus mm, this is not good. This is bad. So actually, it's more the tone and the frequency of what I'm saying that really determines what what I mean. And that's why the, the words themselves, which have a lot of power, not just English, but extending across many languages, will still never be able to fully uh, animate themselves unless they're spoken by a being that has the essence that's necessary to feel that frequency with life. And so, you know, we have a lot of different things going on today. We have a lot of suggestions. And what happens is, is that if, if we don't really uh, take our lessons from the masters in a tense, meaning the ones who've already uh, been through the system through experience and know what's really going on, what we do get is we get somewhat of a haphazard uh, uh, experience in the biome that has billions or, or on top of billions of species that each have a different variation and different use. So when it comes to actually getting the knowledge and the information of, you know, which ones do what, it, English is left behind, languages are left behind. And then what remains is, is the light codes or what they call the light downloads, the, the, uh, the etheric information, the dream, the astral plane. Those are the kind of tools that become necessary to gather what would be billions of years worth of data in a moment based on what's relative to you. Because remember, it's not science for you and it tends to where you want to go and dissect and take apart everything. It's really that you're looking for something specific more importantly, a perfected reflection of yourself. And then you want to grow and be mentored by that collective uh, uh, reflection. And so this is what we're looking for in life. And then unfortunately, if we don't find portals open, meaning when people do just readily go out to get knowledge, just to say, you know what, today I wanna, I wanna discover the meaning of life. I've, I've had it, I, you know, I can't, I'm 20, five now, you know, 25 year olds are like 50 year olds these days, you know, I'm 25 now, you know, I'm starting to see it's all really redundant. I need to figure out the higher level of what I'm going to do in my life. And then when they go to try to find that information, what they find is the, the commercialized version of what consciousness is, and that's still happening. But mind you, the, the more detailed messages, the ones that are heartfelt because the person's going through the experience, such as the, the message that, that you've been presenting, it really becomes obscure for them to find in the sea of, like I said, the, the propagated, oh, this uh, like the lady on weeds goes on the ayahuasca trip. Then the, this new girl goes on ayahuasca trip. Joe Rogan, who's a, who's a great guy, you know, he goes on the DMT. But the reality is, is that if everyone's still trying to live through them, like that song Vicarious, <laughs> 
if they're just trying to live through them and they're not actually going and having that experience themselves, then they've really kind of bought into what the program is attempting to do anyway, which is to allow you to be a voyeur, but don't go actually do it. Play the video game, but don't try to live in the video game. When what we actually have and what, we, what we're in possession of and always will be is an entire uh, uh, imagination projector, something that it just it, the limits of it are really our mind how much we can really imagine but what is one major key that's often omitted you know because these are very positive thoughts to go with but how do we make it happen one of the main things that's forgot about is the actual energetic potential or the amplification that is necessary for this to also work for you. And so what we really work with a lot at secretenergy.com and, and all the websites that we've put together and the different things that we put together for everyone is getting them more familiar with the numero uno or the, all the numerals, if you want to say it that way, self. And the, to come to the total realization that all is self and that a brute could be rather useful if you're towing something but not rather useful if you're like trying to put something very small and minuscule together. So this means that inside of our body, there is a whole spectrum. We wouldn't even be here if there wasn't. A whole spectrum of real, alive existences, essences, alchemical cabinet, whatever you want to call it. And then what we need to understand how to do is how to perform the alchemy within ourselves to say, okay, this is the one that I need to put with this, or this is exactly where I need to put this. So that way we get the results that we're looking for in the reality. So of course, if, we, if we're sitting at, let's say a bioorganic supercomputer and you're at the mainframe, but it's just a command prompt there, what do you do? And if you look at the keyboard and the keyboard's all a bunch of weird characters that you've never seen before, what do you do? And this is kind of the same way that a person can recognize a Nike sign, a person can recognize a Adidas sign, but if you show them a leaf on a tree, like a mango tree, they're like, uh, <laughs> am I actually supposed to tell you the difference between that and all the rest of the leaves? Aren't they all the same? Of course not. They're, of course, not all the same. But if we can't identify the language that the biome is speaking, then we're left to fend for ourselves within the, the many, um, what I'll say is, uh, how can I sum up? Oh, the cabal. Okay, that's, that's a perfect word because it means cable. It means A is supposed to connect to Z, or the first letter of the language is supposed to connect to the last letter of the language, and then that's supposed to function like a disk. And then when a person takes it in as a program, it's supposed to spin in their mind, giving them the operations of their program. So in, in every tense, then, if, if we don't speak the program of the language, the organic, excuse me, of the planet, the organic language, then we're truly lost. Now, lost seems to be variations of layers, since we know that there's no such thing as death. But what there is is this perception of death or this cutoff point. And I can guarantee everyone that's listening that those cutoff points are the spaces or the walls between our perception of our continuous existence. What I'm saying is, is that when you cut it off, when you say, okay, I've had enough, because in a life, in a physical life, which is in a vortex, that's the only place that it could actually become inhabited, that you could inhabit something. If physical life becomes to a point where you've made too many of the wrong decisions of when you should have did zero, when you did one, or whatever it is in the binary dualistic realities, when that goes on too much, at a certain point you hit the button, you're like, okay, I need out, I need to check out, start over, I'm ready to start over. And that is more of the design of death in its use. It's, it's impossible, meaning for an immortal to die, you know, you really need to be deep into some kind of trance in a tense to, to even believe that that's true, that that can happen. But the most interesting part that we'll find is, is that when you're, when you're living in totality, when you have no end, it's amazing what you may come up with. <laughs> it's like, what are we doing today? Uh, you know, we're, there's going to be this thing we're going to call death because the fact that we live forever may be a bit more terrifying these days for many people than the fact that we die. Because if you make lots of mistakes, you're kind of ready to check out and come back again, especially if you know your firmware or the hard code of your consciousness says, hey, you don't really die. You're not really this body. And it knows that, and it's going to let you run out with ego for 72 years or 70 years or however long you live, pretending that that's not true. But there's always an a anchor, and that's the, the symbolic of our umbilical cord. There's always something that is going to keep us anchored into what existence is really about and who we really are and our real identities. 
But the interesting part is, is that discovering our real identities equals a lot of growing up. And this is why adept is synonymous with growing, being adult. Because as a seed, you know, look at, you see the same process in life. Nothing about the occultism and esoteric knowledge is different than the same process in life. When we watch kids when they're younger, they could have a care in the world beside having fun and having a great time and discovering new. Then at a certain point, <laughs> you start to really have more priorities of, you know, how you need to preserve yourself and, and all of these kind of things that are added to the lifestyle. So what we have to see is our same growth on a macrocosmic level, a grand level, is no different than that, that we come into these existences and we play a bit at first, and then we realize that playing becomes immature. And this is for each being. You know, we're all connected, but we're all separate. That's a part of the conundrum. It's called universe, uni, united, verse, in conflict or against, in duality. So how does that even work? But that question, and this is why the logical mind is not fit enough to deal with this kind of stuff. I mean, you're in a losing battle if you're attempting to use the logical mind to distinguish what all this is really about. You can only get pointers. But the reality of this really is, is that when we start looking into how we came here, which is through the mother, through the feminine energy, start going behind the eyes. Go behind the eyes. In front of the eyes is already manifested. Behind the eyes is who is manifesting. And we, when we go behind the eyes, we find that there's not just female humans. There's female frogs. There's female lions. There's female insects. So what feminine is, is not just you know, this lady walking down the runway or mother or even great grandmother or any of the archetypes that you've set up. It's actually something that's much more grand than that, that moves like a large force. And when we get familiar with these forces and see this is this is where, you know, um, if you fall into foolishness and if you get lost, everything that you interpret will be from that stance. It's not that you'll just all of a sudden figure it out. You have to climb your way back up. So what I've discovered within a lot of the ancient traditions, and this is from Kometan to Druidic, is that each culture had its uh, period of enlightenment. And during those periods, they identified, and the last one that happened recently was the 300 years ago enlightenment era, or the, uh, the age of reasoning, as they call it. And what happens during those, uh, that period is the knowledge of nature, or the netter, or the netteru, is discovered, the force. You know, that, that's the force they're talking about. But it's much more than just a little glow stick in the side of the, the side pocket. That force, once it starts to be, uh, uh, people want to figure it out. And they start digging into it. Oh, man, it's, it's already there. See, this is the thing about it. It's, like, it's not like we're going to uh, try to create something. We're actually going to discover the creation. So what generally is bought back in the language, in the, in the kind of term and knowledge, the, the, the way that we understand things, what's bought back to us is something that is, is representing that. And for every culture, the first thing that they did is they always took the forces and gave them either animal or human counterpart uh, appearance, right? So you see that in the Neturu that, you know, there's a head of a crocodile and, and, then, and that embodies time because crocodile has 60 teeth, you know, the time units move in the, in the system of 60. The crocodile is a reptile that kind of connects with Father Time. Father Time or Sol Beck is still the, uh, one of the cognates of Saturn. And then you get the whole roll in of even the geometric pole that it moved from, the diametric, op the diametric oppositions, meaning what actually is in the opposite orbit of that planet that can balance out the weight. That's what Sirius is A and Sirius B, Sirius B's, uh, Sirius C's name was weight. So the counterbalance and the weights and measures of how to make sure life stays in stabilization would be more of what we're talking about. But you see how still the, the, the immature consciousness wouldn't even know what to do with all that. It's like uh, a young boy that is just starting puberty with a grown woman. He wouldn't know what to really do because of the, the depth of what he would be dealing with. You see what I mean? So we all find ourselves in this situation. The more that we band together and we connect this knowledge, it is real. Like a lot of, uh, um, a lot of teachings really center around more of the mind. Okay, and what I challenge people to do is like to get into the actual spiritual side of it. Because in there you have the essence. Because it's easy for, and this is, this is how you'll know when, when, um, when there's been a lot of dealing with logic. 
when someone that, that has been just doing logic all the time actually says something wrong, because you do it from time to time, nobody is perfect, then that person is immediately judged for that wrong statement. And then everyone will actually dismiss that person because of what they may have done wrong in that one moment. Versus when you're dealing with the essence and the nature or the nectar, this would be like if your mom found you doing something wrong, her all of a sudden just leaving you just because of the one thing you did wrong. That doesn't even make any sense. So this is the difference of what we're dealing with. And again, we're encouraged to use both of these forces. This is the handshake logic, which functions as a bridge to back, like a, a way back to our enlightenment, if you want to call it. And so, you know, this is, this is uh, you know, I may be jumping around a bit, but this is somewhat of the embodiment of what we're talking about when we're talking about expansion. We also, but we do deal with contraction meaning that it's important for us to deal with the yin and the yang, not just the yin or not just the yang. And so even for me to continuously watch the news every day and just complain and complain and claim about what I'm seeing, it tells me for sure that if there was something that I could do about it, I would have wasted all that time by just complaining. Also, just in the language, solution as a word identifies itself as being the sun. That's what soul is, okay? So if solutions are the sun, this means that if we, if we understand just a little bit about metaphysics, that the sun is what's spraying out the entire reality of, 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 that we're looking at, right? It's spraying the light, and then as the light's slowing down the vortex, it's becoming congealed, it's sticking together, and then it's becoming what, different forms of life, air, fire, the different kind of elements. So when we just take that alone, what we start to see is we start to see that we have this place then. If we choose to remain here on, on, in this state of consciousness, below the speed of light, this means below the sun, then we'll be always subject to these different things going on. But we should never forget that the solution or the sun existed before the problem did. So this means that any situation that we're facing, I don't care what it is, limitless doesn't start happening until you get beyond the sun. Limitless is not possible here on planetary spheres that are inside of bubbles because limitless would just blow up planets. That's why they keep saying it's a big bang. It's a big bang. What is a big bang? Uh, when your planet blows up. Why would your planet blow up? Well, too many people inside of a bubble. And, it, you know, you can watch this under the microscope when, and they use this even as a form of energy. You can even get uh, germs and bacteria to do it. When they start replicating so fast, they're actually increasing space and volume. Then when you compress them, this is equivalent to, you know, something even more grander than a pipe bomb, but the same concept. As it continues to grow, it forces this pressure. And then the pressure still keeps going and it tries to contain it. Now, it's fortunate that spheres, which are what the planetary, we're in a planetary sphere, the bubble around it, are capable, just like the pyramid, of taking on tons of the pressure of, that goes on in expansion. Because you can imagine, even when someone lets off one of these bombs that they're letting off right now over in the east, and if you ever watch those go off, you know the round and the, the concussion and all that that goes on. How does the bubble contain that kind of kicking from the children that are going on inside of it? How strong is this really? And the thing is, is that when we start to ask ourselves those questions, but even greater, when we start giving ourselves those answers, that's when we start not figuring out who the planet is. We start figuring out who we are. Because you can be an alien on a planet or you could be on your home planet. That all depends on how well you adapt. It has nothing to do with where you came from. Where we're from, there is no space and time. It collapse. Space time doesn't exist there. Gravity doesn't exist there. A lot of stuff doesn't exist there because nothing is actually attempting to exist. Nothing is saying, I'm the first one that came into the existence. This is why that kind of behavior, though, becomes very useful for creating the spaces that we live in. That's why the, the actual uh, inception point of this reality is really of a more grander being saying, I'm going to create something. Just like even when we have children, it's because you made a decision, or sometimes not always a conscious one at that moment, that you were going to create something. But not creating an iPad, not creating uh, 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 some, s some car, not creating that, but actually creating a live biological organism 
that has so many moving parts and functions, it baffles the, the minds of anyone who actually attempts to, to take it apart. But it welcomes those who are going to put it back together within themselves. So the only intention that one needs to have is, is within themselves saying, okay, I'm ready to commit myself. I'm bringing myself in for repairs. I'm no longer going to let it be somebody else's responsibility to do that because, and this is why when it comes into maturity, why it comes into maturity, it's at a point when you're at, when you're in life and you're like, okay, I, I get it now. I get that. I'm going to die like the rest of them if I don't figure out something new. Now, nobody's going to bring it to me. It's not going to drop out of the sky. I'm going to be responsible for going to get it myself. Because even if someone just tells me about it, even by the way the language is rigged, if somebody tells me about it, it's still nothing like experiences. And this is why all books are generally squares or rectangles. So it shows you right away that you're going to go through the cube to attempt to find out what goes on in something that is non-cubed. You see, so this is, this is the logic versus the uh, intuition. The intuition will tell you, hey, it's a cube. <laughs> so we know what we're dealing with here, right? So same thing when you look at the language. The language, every language, when you drop it upon itself, it makes a symbol. Hebrew, when you drop it upon itself, it makes a Megan star, what they call the star of David, the six-pointed star, right? So English, when you drop it upon itself, it actually makes a cube. And so geometrically, what's rolling through the mind then is a cube. And if you don't know the positions of the cube, which actually make all the geometry that we're looking at in this reality that's been added, if you don't know those positions, you can get lost in the cube. And then it's like Hellraiser. Time starts to become an effect. You know, you meet old pinhead, you know, all sorts of different types of nightmares because this is what the cube is about. Even within the embodiment of the English language, for the first time, we have introduced horror, death, sickness, pain. These kind of things were not even constructs of other levels of non-Euclidean geometry. Horror, pain, death was not written in the program. So this means no beings living on in those states of consciousness can even phase lock in with horror, pain, and death. They can't actually even see it. And so when we realize how the realities are separated, what's also been depressing us, because there is, make no mistake, there's players in the game. It's all a, vor it's a vortex. You have to get to the top of this, the top of the sink, because there's going to be always things attempting to depress you, push you down further into the vortex, because in there, that's when you're most disorientated. That's when you're very far away from the speed of light or your consciousness or your origin point. All of those things would actually take place. And so, you know, I won't be long winded about it any longer. You know, that's really more of an introduction of um, of what we're bringing forth. But, you know, there's a lot of nooks and crannies to it. Like we really we dig into the body. We talk a lot about food. We talk a lot about uh, preferred foods, how to deal with your energetic centers. And, uh, and where the, the origins of those energetic centers. And then most importantly, not only the as above, so below relationship, but the as inside, also outside relationship. Like space and time at least moves like a cross. It doesn't move in just one direction, two directions, one direction, and then the other direction. It moves at least like a cross. So we're challenged again to start to see, well, okay, if all this is happening on different levels, then what is this variation of what happens on the higher level? Like, what, what is the higher level version of electricity? Or what is the lower level version of electricity? So, I mean, just to answer the question, lower level version of electricity is the snake. It hisses and spits. It is electric. It is Elohim, meaning the ones to bring the electric force, the thunderers, right? So that's one a vital tool in the alchemical cap. Instead of putting a face on it, instead of putting a story around it, you know, because there's going to be many stories, because how many people had experienced it and what was their experience? And we can best believe Tesla's experience may be different than someone's that got electrocuted by it, the experience. So you're going to get all these experiences. The thing is, is where's your experience with electric? Same thing with magnetic or mag, the magi, Megan, the, the, the priestcraft of the magnetic magi, right, or the Magdalena, you know, the, the, uh, all the, the essence 
of the vacuum, the actual, uh, uh, you know, if you just deal with magnets, you can really start to understand more of what you would be talking about. But as a living force of energy that also lives through others. But what is that symbolism? The bird, right? Light. So then when we see the crown, if you see the snake and you see the bird, it's not because these people are worshiping snakes and birds. <laughs> there was no TV. So you stop doing things that don't make sense rather fast or you never start doing them because you don't have that kind of distraction. It meant I master electric magnetic. And with that, when I force electric magnetic together, because they're the Jacob and Boaz, they're the two opposing poles, they don't want to be together. I make electromagnet. Then once I make electromagnetic, I make your world. Your world is electromagnetic. Without having electromagnetics, your entire grid around your body will fall apart. UCLA already did the experiment. I think it was the experiment of the dodo ring or whatever they call it. It's basically they isolate the entire field and they leave all electromagnetics out of the field. And magnetics and electricity and anything that has a frequency is left out of the field. And they had to conduct these experiments because after popping off one of those crazy billion dollar budgets on the spacecraft that probably was never going to leave the launch pad, they still need to make sure that once the humans that were inside just for insurance purposes didn't actually basically die when they left the orbit of Earth because there's supposed to be no electromagnetic sphere. So they needed to perform not having an electromagnetic sphere. So they performed the experiment and the person that was inside of the ring, this was three or four times, they'd lose all consciousness. Cognizance of motor skills, functions, the whole nine. It's like, blah, 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 no more. Why? Because there's no more grid. So you got people, <laughs> you know, they still want to get rid of the grids or they want to change the grids, but you don't even know what a grid really is and what its function is. Everything has a function. And that's what I'm saying about we just need to understand how to put this stuff in the right place. And then it needs to become common speak. Like, you know, this is the, this is the conversation that I'm having while I may be playing a video game. This is what I'm doing while I'm driving on the way to work if I have to work. You see what I mean? Like this, it just needs to be commonplace because everything that we're doing has some level of construction to it. Like, I could say younger in life when I did play video games that it did allow me to understand how to project myself into another world and to act like it was real. That's when you become a good player, what they call elite. Also, the hand and eye uh, uh, movement is key. But, of course, video games are harmful for children, right? So, you see, it's what's making everything harmful is us not putting it in its proper place and identifying and tagging what its use is. So that way, when someone else goes and attempts to uh, pick it up, that they know how it functions. Because imagine if you come into the world and then by the time, you know, you're done running around and losing your breath at about, you know, to eight years old, nine years old, when you're ready to start delving into the higher sciences, if you may, or the higher levels of spirituality or the basically bird snake, try to figure out what's exactly going on in the biome so you can join all father and all mother and, you know, the massive uh, uh, nucleus of the cosmos, et cetera, et cetera to actually really get the job of your, of your future or career of picking up lost souls from the astral plane like a tow truck or whatever, if you're, if you're looking to get into that, because remember, anything that you can think of, it's really anything that you can think of, and this is why. See, when the Metatronic numbers came forth, which is what created the English language out of a cube, the reason the Metatronic numbers were used is to prevent anomalies meaning to prevent things from happening inside the biome that would just eradicate the biome. This is the first thing that you do before you even begin because if you don't, that's the ending. And since everything is created on another space first and then happens here, it means it was all planned out. But what was the construct? And the only term that the humans have for that construct was the metatronic numbers, the same numbers that computers run by, the four, the eight, the binary codes. Because what that does is it, even the numbers get huge, they're still predictable. It's only the phi codes that get unpredictable. But oh my, when you mix the phi codes in with the metatronic numbers, this is five and six. Right? So that's five or phi and six or sex. So five and six, let's talk about these two. Just to show how the blueprint works. What are the two days in the week we had the most fun? Friday and Saturday. <laughs> Friday and Saturday, baby. I'll never forget. Friday, Venus. Saturday, Saturn. So when these two get together, death and life, 
which is what they stand for on archetypical level of an archonic sphere, a sphere, a seven point sphere of an archon, then when those two get together, you, man, anything can happen. So thus Friday and Saturday in most people's lives, anything can happen. Versus other days are much more fixed. They have much more authority. You see, so this is, this is the dynamics to if, then it gets fun. <laughs> Because each person is also doing the analysis of their uniqueness and reporting back exactly the algorithm of how it makes it unique. Then for an individual who is able to access that algorithm, meaning to really read that person and to know and to feel them, what they gain from that experience and what both of them gain from that experience is yet another level to their growth. This is symbios. Symbios creates worlds infinitely like that because what you have there is you have the perfect moment and for me to explain this very simply what happens is is that there's always this perfect moment in our lives and that's when we generally can create some kind of life now not all life lives with just in making children many of our ideas are our seeds or are our children sometimes we can build something it may be a company or some kind of venture that you want to help others and it will grow from a baby stage adult stage it can die it has all the same phases, and it's because we're using the forces that are alive. Like when you think of something, that thought and that essence that you're pulling from the subjective plane, that is the same goo that it takes for you even to sit down and to print something. Let's say you're using a 3D printer or something on that level. So, you know, I, I, I have to desist for a moment just to, to give us a moment. I think we're probably entering somewhere near the top of the hour. But, you know, you can see how the wheel can get to turning and, you know, and things can start really coming out, but it is more specific than this, meaning that, what? <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> well, why don't you tell us how you came upon this knowledge? Uh, what was your path? And maybe that'll help give us some guidance into understanding uh, what you're telling us. Sure. I'm an anomaly. <laughs> no, serious. What was I believe that. No, yeah, <laughs> well, no, go, go with it. Well, what, was, sure. what was discovered in the Metatronic numbers once they started counting themselves very high is that anomalies were occurring. And this is when actually they, they attempted to control the field. They would be more like what you would see as the Sith Lords on Star Wars, meaning that the Jesuits don't like anomalies. So they t they're telling it all to you then. They, they pull the holocrons from the future, meaning those who were to become Jedi. Jedi is Jedi, which means a priest, a priest of Kemet. So they pull the holograms from, crumbs from the future, so that way they could basically derail them in a con consistent loop so they would never discover the secret to time. And thus, becoming a time, thus become a time lord. Because once you're in a time lord, then you, once you're a time lord, or can control time, can build your field up so high that you're, no, you're, you're basically not being affected by gravity, the process is like climbing a ladder. That's what they call Jacob's ladder. It's like climbing your spine. Once you get to a certain point, you get to a mid-level. I'm still going to tell you about me in a minute, but I'm just finishing this. Once you get to a certain point, you actually balanced out. You're even. This is like synonymously saying in the reality, okay, we're even. I don't got no more karma left. I've burned it all off. I've worked it off. And this is why yoga and even lifting weights, all these things become very useful if you know what you're doing because you're burning off karma. That's why, you know, you're even sweating and <laughs> fat's even dripping off because that, all that is karma or lower density car. This is a carnivore, carnage, all these words mean flesh. So the more flesh you burn, the more you burn your flesh, the more that you can get into a higher state of your own consciousness. Burning flesh simply means refusing your, your, uh, the fleshly nature when it's not benefiting you. But it doesn't definitely mean to stop it altogether because that will cause a lockup in the energy. So what happened with me was, is that it's, see, this is several lifetimes from what I've you know, been able to gather to this point. And the calculation is really within the name personally for me, but I am a third. So this is my third time around. Then the calibration of my name actually equals the left pillar, the right pillar, and the middle pillar. Okay. So inside of the body, this lifetime, I would be embodying the components of balance. Of course, everyone is, but it's just about, again, this lifetime, or is it going to all go away at the football game, or you know, is it going to be a you know, whole life, and then you get hurt? And what's going to be the story, basically? Are you really going to make this the point you enter the continuum? So me, personally, I, I'm not going to try to wait till the next time. I'm very aggressive about making sure that I do get and stay and remain above the speed of light. But when I was younger, I grew up on a military base, 
And I had my mother moved around a lot. She was actually a supermodel. My father was an officer in the military. So this was like yin and yang already, you know, extreme order and then no order. And uh, and what came from that, obviously, was me. And I could remember when I was younger getting a lot of tests. This is I did grow up on a military base and I, I know that they were testing for aptitude. And there was always a big thing to see who was going to go to tech, who was going to get Edison Tech or go to the Gifted and Talented or the GATE programs. And it's a great thing, I feel like, for me that I had a brilliant mind, but I had a bad conduct. <laughs> I, I was a C and a D in conduct. So this meant that despite how smart I was, it was always you're on the waiting list <laughs> because that doesn't work for them. If you, you need to be smart and you need to be humble and controllable, then you get into a gate program and then they start compartmentalizing your mind. They're gating the child's mind. And this is why later on you can end up even working for CERN and never realize even that what you're searching for is actually inside of your body. You know, the, all the compartmentalized that deal with science and all the knowledge and things that, not the ones that know, but the ones that know meaning in the know, but the ones that have all this knowledge and you've been to school for 10, 12 years and the obvious is not dawning on them, even though they're, they're sitting in the laboratory with it, looking at it versus us Gnostics don't even have access to it, only used it, but except for through our imagination and have been able to conceive the entire thing. It's like what Tesla was saying. I could see the entire invention in my mind and then I just need to go and put it together and get the money and the thing, the parts and stuff to put it together. So this is how a true savant actually functions. So what happened from there is, is that we moved from here to there. So I never got a chance to really uh, ground with a lot of the children and the kind of the culture that everyone was living in. In addition to that, my mother was, uh, was, was already awake. She already knew that the school system had a, uh, a curriculum that was being designed to control minds. And, and all this came from the communities that sprouted up in Detroit and Motown and all those times when, when men like uh, uh, Malcolm X and Elijah Muhammad and these kind of uh, characters in every tense, meaning actual real embodiments of characters were acting out and, and people were taking lead from what they were teaching. So, you know, at, at a certain point, everyone was really, especially after the big fallout, everyone was encouraged to just find their knowledge and find your way in this world. And my mom, she went and did that. And she also did that with the conditioning that her children were gonna be raised the same way. So in short, I didn't get a chance to really expose myself to a lot of uh, what went on in the standard household. But you know, the interesting part is I know everything about it because every time we would get a chance to, we would be trying to watch the Jetsons. We would, you know, I'm waiting for the, uh, I, I see I Love Lucy is coming on and that means there's no more cartoons until two. I'm looking, I'm looking at, you know, the entire structure because this is Oceanside, California. So I'm growing up in the heart of what you would call patriotism. You know, I'm on a military base for a certain period, then off military base, but still living in the military structure of what the United States and California and those areas present. And, um, and so in, in short, I was there, I was experiencing it, but I was also experiencing another life, which was the, the heavy levels of spirituality, the no TV, the uh, only reading books, you know, and that became commonplace for me to, to continuously read spiritual books as my form of entertainment. And I blended that in. So if I got a chance to, you know, get this computer from the secondhand store and install Duke Nukem with a sound card, I would still be in there trying to connect all of them together. And, and also I have an exceptional memory from what I would say is that I've, I've been able to really um, categorize everything in all of my levels of life because obviously once you, when you grow up in a very spiritual household, it's a slingshot effect. The moment that you get a chance to do whatever you want to, you go and do it so strong, you're really at the height of it. And so, uh, so I had this sort of the last, you know, I'm, I'm 36 now, so for the last, I would say, 30 years or, you know, even younger than that, I've had this eyes wide open kind of look at the reality. And the other main thing that dri drove that was when I was younger, I think it was like four or five. It's one of the earliest points that I can remember even probably before that, I, something died. I'm not sure exactly what it was. And uh, I asked my mom, you know, so what, curse, what happens now? And she said, well, you know, it's dead. And I said, so what happens next? She said, only God knows. I said, okay, well, we need to, we need to have this discussion with God then. And, you know, so I was like, oh, how do you talk to God? And she said, you know, you pray and then you talk to God and then you can ask God for anything that you want. And I said, OK. And she, we were in the car when we were having this conversation. 
So when I got home, I mean, I was almost peeing on myself to get back to the house. And when I got back to the house, I ran upstairs and I got on the bed and I said, God, I want all the money in the world. <laughs> See, because as a child's mind, none of what she said made any sense. So okay. you just take it as they give it to you. And then you say, well, shoot, instead of me, ask, first, let me start with priority here, like genie in the bottle kind of priority, like wish for more wishes first. Let me wish first for a ton of money so we could get out of all these problems. And then I'll figure out what happens after death. But as a serious thing, as a child, uh, I grew up with this thing. And, and I, that's, I call that it's like the thorn in the side of any time that I would feel like I was having fun, something would kind of say, but you still don't know. Or it would just be an uncomfortable feeling. And then I would have to like, even in the middle of fun, be like, man, we're supposed to be having fun. What's up? It's like, man, but you still don't know what's going to happen when you die. And neither do these people. So I think that what this happens, what, how this happens is when you go multiple lives in the matrix, the matrix, it, it's really functioning almost like a, a reincarnation program. So once you kind of start getting, you know, you're trying to get stable in a vortex, people. Think about in the center of the sink, you're trying to get balance. <laughs> you're being whipped around every single moment to like you're dizzy or a.k.a. you're in a daze. So there's days of the week. You're weak, meaning not having enough power. But easily, though, let me show you how this works. When you flip that around, when you become the creator, you see time as weak, minuscule, as in minutes, small, time, small thing, not something I'm really concerned about. I'm an immortal. So you see, everything is based on what your position actually is. And I, man, I've had to learn this thousands of times of beating my head against the wall of division and attempting to find fault with something or to blame something rather than to put it to work for me. You see what I mean? And this is why, to construct the temple. Now, look, it's hidden in the esoteric knowledge, but if you're trying to interpret it uh, uh, physically or externally, oh, look out, you're going to get a monster. Solomon used demons, demons to build the temple. This simply means that the solar man uses daemon or diamonds, which are carbon-based cells, that's what the DNA is, to build the temple, which is the spire or the spiral in the temple that builds the DNA back up. So that way he doesn't face or she doesn't face the issue of when God, who's the Gothic king from the world and the, the land of the dead, doesn't get all pissed off that you're going to be ascending soon. So thus you're going to leave dominion and become a sovereign and send you another language <laughs> Because that's what was used to confuse everyone in the Bible. So that way you don't know anymore that everyone is really the same. <laughs> and then you would then getting the whole idea that some being that exclaims and I'm the only one. But from inside of something, because remember, God says, I'm the only God from inside of the earth, according to how the Talmud reads it. So that can't be true. Not to mention the reason why you know it's not true is because we weren't created. So meaning that there is no beginning. And that just fries logic. That, that's the end of logic. Logic's like, okay, I'm done. If there's no beginning, something's wrong with you. This is not, <laughs> this is something's wrong here. I'm, I'm having a meltdown. It's like, if you ever create a program that it, it simulated to the computer that there was no beginning, it will fry itself right there. The pro processes would just go done because it can't, compre it can't comprehend it, that. All right. And of course, that's, that's what I hold on to. And, and I tell you people, we're right on the precipice right now because see that, that's infinite energy. The thought of it is infinite energy. We just need to understand how to extract that. And the reason why uh, uh, it, it functions that way, why that's infinite energy, is because thoughts can become energy. Some people say, well, thoughts are not food. That's what, what, you never heard of food for thought? Okay, so think about this. If you knew they called you on the phone, it was the real people, because you went in there and you got the lottery ticket, and they said, hello? Mr. So-and-so, no names, mate. <laughs> um, sir, we were calling you because I'm not sure if you checked your ticket, but you've won $3 million. 
Uh, if you can come down today, later on today before five or tomorrow and to pick it up, you know, that would be great. We can get the whole procedure started. All right. You hang up the phone. Oh my goodness. <laughs> what are you feeling like? Now, remember, the only thing that's happened is someone has sent you an idea. And it's your sheer belief in that idea that is about to drive your frequency so high you can't go to sleep. I mean, you're about to George Jefferson walk and do the click like the scarecrow down the steps with a backflip and rub the dog and kiss the labor and the rest of everyone else because you've just won. But the reality is, look at the term, just won. When you become one, when you actually pull in all forces and cut all of these different tubes and cables connected to you, Neo, then you can power up into the sphere. Like you blast right out of the vortex is the visualization. You become an uploader flying in the face of the sun. Now the sun is spraying at you. This is like, okay, so his, hey, uh, sons, by the way, it's not a male. <laughs> it's obviously as a dynamo, a male, female, because it has to have both poles, and then it's forced them together. So here you come, and you're coming home. And nobody is stopping you because all of this is going on in your mind and in the consciousness that embodies your mind. There's no physical phenomena as they say, when seeing is believing, that really needs to go on. Because, and that's what makes it free. That's what makes it, in, when you're ready to do it, that's what gives you all of the power over it. Because if it was in the external world, now there's mirrors here, don't get me wrong. But if it was all just there and not inside of you, which is go against even the laws of physics, that even the laws of alchemy, laws that people put their whole lives into. Alchemy tells you that within everything, there's a small part of what is in everything. Later on, later on, they call that the atom. But then they say, once you can harness that everything, see, alchemy went further. They wanted to harness it. Once you can harness that everything, then you can tap into this transformative power and then dirt can become gold. Right. And then even the variations like this is like this is when you're on the, the adventure and you find the chest. Are, what are you you're talking about? A great arcana, a panuncia. It's could this be real? Yeah, it's real. It's all inside of you, except you need to extract it. That's the big clause. That's like, oh, you got to be an extractor. I said we extracted him from the matrix. You got to be a distiller. You have to be able to distill the essence. And so that's what we deal with here in the physical reality. <laughs> and I think we're, at, we're probably at the top of the hour, so I do invite everyone to, to get hour two and yeah, check it out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it goes by so fast, yeah, Evan, it's it for does. sure. <laughs> and for the listeners to know, uh, the website is secretenergy.com. And, uh, and we, we've as also, I did forget to announce that we did launch the university. It actually starts this week uh, on Sunday. That's Father's Day. But there is a complete archive, so we welcome people to check it out. It's at secretenergy.com forward slash enroll. Or if you just get to Secret Energy, you, you'll find something that's related to it. All right. And what is uh, the point and purpose of the university? Well, obviously, you know, we've been we've been up for, I think, six again, six, seven years now. And, you know, this information is so vast. We've really done a good job at never saying the same thing twice in most cases. But what that's mm -hmm. also created is, is a lot of people ask, where do I start? And so what we did was, is we put together a nine uh, step curriculum that uh, basically allows a person to start in the netherworld, which is actually not a, a negative thing. I don't, you know, that's a new interpretation of the netherworld. It's actually a bad place. But it starts all the way at the bottom, and then it teaches you how to bring your energy up from the, from the lower, from the roots of things, and then build current. And you know, it teaches you how current, your current in your body is connected to your current C. Um, it teaches you about, the, it's a lot of one-on-one, so, because, you know, obviously we want to pour it on thick for a person that's just now getting familiar with this stuff, but how language functions as a code. It tells you how to deprogram MK Ultra programming. Uh, I mean, we have 10 different areas that we're hitting on this first course that starts on Sunday, so, you know, I do invite people to, to check it out. I, I think that we really have one of the largest uh, vaults of information 
uh, really on the internet right now. That's relative because obviously our platform is fully curated um, by adepts. So we make sure we choose the content that we're putting in there, but we have a lot. So you can actually go to the site. There's a directory. Obviously, Freeman, you're on that directory of spiritual advisors. Uh, there's also a directory for shows and stations. Um, there's a directory for uh, books, like top rated books that really will get right to the point for you. Uh, there's a documentary section that's segmented off pretty well, so that way you can get documentaries related to consciousness and expansion, fringe, you name it, uh, and those are all there. And uh, finally, there's, um, there's actually a large illustration library that contains many of the images that we've, um, we've gotten over the years of following keywords, even though some of the, the more deeper libraries are actually locked right now because that's what we're doing when we're taking everyone through this curriculum. And then at a certain sp uh, uh, stage, if a person's taking that course, we've, we unlock the library for them because, you know, that's just being responsible because some of the stuff in there, if you get it twisted, could, could, could cause some, some, some issues. So we want to make sure that we're, we're practicing uh, uh, safe spirituality, if you may, you know, because there's there a go. lot of stuff out there. <laughs> Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Oh, and thank you so much for including me in that. Oh, man, I, uh, that, was, that was done like the day that we launched. We just we there's actually, you know, anyone who's anyone really, you know, really is there. Um, but that anyone I mean, there's people that are not there, like Deepak Chakra's not there. So you know, I was, I just, you know, so mind you, Freeman's there, but Deepak's not. So you kind of understand the algorithm we're using. There you <laughs> so, go. So, yeah, the sweet. Truth. So that's what's All up. right. <laughs> Well, members, if you want to join us in the members section, we are going to be discussing how to make a prism break, For sure. how to form a blueprint to build a bridge to bring us into uh, necessary modules that we can then lay down and start to expand our own consciousness out to the world yeah. and uh, utilizing this blueprint to form the new society. So we're going to get deep into this with Sevan Bomar. His website, again, is secretenergy.com and also producing Inner University. So we're going to learn. Are you the captain? Are you the pilot? Should you be both? How is this all going to work out? <laughs> so join us now in the members section as we get deeper into the step-by-step -step processes that we can go through and the concepts and ideas of building communities and modules to allow us to start to solidify uh, our spiritual selves. So I'm very excited to move on to this. And any of you that are not yet subscribers and want to subscribe, just so you know, you go over to freemantv.com, click on subscribe. You've got many options. You can just subscribe for a single month if you want, no recurring payments. Uh, you can subscribe with recurring payments that you don't have to think about, and you also get a free week. You can send in cash, you know, whatever. And all of this just goes right back into the free zone and all the work that we're doing here. And we are trying so much to expand from this platform to the real world, get out of this internet, and of course the friendship agenda has been a huge part in all of that. So, um, <clears throat> as you know, you're going to find more and more wonderful people like Sevan Bomar coming to you, and we're going to keep just trying to understand ourselves so that we can understand what it is we want from tomorrow. Yeah. So thank you all for tuning in, and I will see you all next week. Well, let's get dangerous, Sevan. Yeah, let's do it. Uh, you know, all right. So one of the most dangerous things that we've been talking about and the potential for danger, of course, is CERN. Uh, but yet the scientists of CERN, as you were saying, are very car compartmentalized and they, they don't know what the other hand is doing. And most of them have no clue as to what the entire apparatus of CERN is for. Now, I keep up on the news when... Um, as CERN is running, and I'm, I will mention that it is shut down right now. It's in its right. uh, hibernation phase, as they expected it to do. But that doesn't mean that there's not leading-edge science coming up out of CERN and the technologies that are put in there. And the most recent article I came about <clears throat> is about scintillation crystals. And I found this very interesting, that these uh, developers of Photo or <laughs> I knew I was going to st stumble over that word. Uh, photonic, okay, so that is light technologies, photonic e technologies uh, utilized in, in healthcare for uh, tomography, that is to see inside of things. They are utilizing these, what they are called LFS 
crystals, high density, fast decay time, very good energy resolution, super radiation hardness. These are the ultimate crystals for improving the image signal to allow the noise ratio for shorter scanning times, for bringing the frequencies together. And so as I'm looking at this technology, uh, uh, photonics and the idea of, of light technologies that are being utilized using magnets and crystals, all of, all of that comes back to me to this concept of body tech and body technologies that we can utilize because we are all, of course, formed of these same things. So where do you want to go with that? Oh, yeah. I mean, you really opened it up there. So it's, you know, I'm, I'm definitely going to have some fun with this. But, you know, people should understand that the CERN is like the, I'm going to put it, it's like the what Jay-Z is for people who like rap, CERN is for scientists. <laughs> it's like their uh, main event. And what's happened, though, is, is that there's been, you know, a, a, quite a bit of disappointment for the scientific field as far as being able to interpret much of what they're getting back from, from what happened with CERN. And in addition, that I don't think that CERN will actually be cut back on because it was one of those machines that you run it for a certain period and just like a very large house, stuff just starts breaking in order. So they're having issues from the last uh, thing that I read about is they're having issues and keep putting parts of it back together and, and then also getting clearance to turn it on again after there was a major uh, accident where uh, some of the casings exploded and they don't really understand how to predict what's going to happen when they keep doing this. And so everyone's just saying, hey, let's leave well enough alone. We've already got the data and the data is still in processing. And, you know, let, let's see what we do with that versus maybe putting a hole in, you know, the, the entire earth here. And so but there's obviously something going on on a much bigger level anytime you get that much currency. I would encourage people to really to see that when, when a lot of currency moves anywhere, that currency does still equal at some point human hours. It's like, uh, what was that, uh, the movie uh, Jupiter Ascending, where it's literally, you could, the energy is a certain unit of human lives, right? So human hours, when something costs, let's say, $13 billion, how many human hours is that for all those small parts that need to be made and all that? And so what you're really dealing with on the next level of, of, uh, of, of well, what would be next door or across the looking glass or right next door is they deal heavily with what's called an egregors. And what egregors are is even when you form a company, it creates something on the astral plane. And in fact, what generally, it, it had already an existence on the astral plane generally first and then it's finally made it into physicality then an entity is formed, a corp is formed or a corpse, and then it begins to embody, meaning that all the living organisms begin to inhabit it. That's the people working in the office, just like inside of our body, there's bacteria and things working inside of us. So when that starts, you know, it's, it's another micro macro version of really the same things. There, nothing is dead. Even the steel and, the, and the, uh, the plastic even has a certain level of life and frequency to it. So when we, when we pull back off of all this, what we start seeing is it's very, very large forms of consciousness, almost like blobs themselves, but being uh, completely composed of one specific wavelength or an absolute, meaning something that it, this is how, it's literally saying this is how I am and this is how I'm going to be, nothing's going to change me. And there's so many of those that exist and we oscillate back and forth as human beings between different ones where we at times choose kind of what we want to be like here and then what we like here. It's like a buffet. We take what we like and then we leave the rest. So what really occurred when you look at the situation in CERN is that first of all, so the reason why I said that it's like the Jay-Z to the rappers is because also all the other scientists, because obviously not all the scientists working at CERN, there's hundreds of thousands of scientists all around the world, and they were watching this as they would be watching God, because what, are they, what, is, what is the whole theme of it? The theme is to find the Higgs boson, which is the God particle, which will eventually lead to the discovery of dark matter. So this is a scientific version of spirituality. And you get a chance in the uh, movie Particle Fever to see how stale and cold that idea would be, just in case you were trying to inherit that idea. People who work underground for years, 
they even lose all the pigmentation in their skin. They look like they're about to die. You know, there's nothing around it that seems like, hey, this, this may be a good idea for all of us or something that we're really going to benefit from. And that's the thing about how life always tells the truth. You always see abundance. You always see uh, 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 energy, brightness, all that kind of thing around stuff that's like that. And then when you don't see that, you shouldn't fool yourself to believe that that actually exists there. So basically what we saw is people eating hot dogs and pizza and donuts attempting to crack the great arcana. And realistically, since it has to come from the inside out, it was never going to happen anyway. But the entities who constructed the entire experiment put all the humans will, because I'm not saying this is negative, and I think people should, should get it very clear. Someone has to say something, damn it, but don't always look at it and get butthurt about what's really being said if you happen to be a scientist. What I'm saying is that if we don't really start realizing what actually is going on, with the compartmentalization, the, the smoke and hat trick, like, hey, it's really over here when it's really over there. When, as, I'm, I, as, as I encourage everyone to do, just look at 300 years ago, 200 years ago, the Enlightenment era, the age of reasoning, Wikipedia, and see how not only all of today's real secret societies, which are still secret, were formed off of that, but also at one point right, right there, you can see all the, much of the information, the pictures and the knowledge that pertain to understanding everything that you need to know about how you exist here. But yet, nobody is offering you that. You don't find that as a billboard up there when you're driving down the freeway, wake up, you need to expand your self and consciousness and knowledge is here. Archive.org has finally reorganized itself. You don't see that, you see Maybelline. When either, even one of these magnets, the ones who have all the currency and cash, could just say, you know what, I'm just gonna put a billboard up there and direct everything over to get archive.org and tell everyone to get, get some fucking sense. And just right. do that, right? Like, cause that would still be your part. And that's why we, we sometimes we expect, <laughs> that's why the Messiah story is very harmful because also people expect that they got to do it the exact same way. Like, be creative. There is a, just because you have this story in your past and history, so what? Everyone does. You used to be a worm. <laughs> you see what I mean? Like, so, and, and still one now. So in, in all things in the full spectrum. So what could be so bad about, and that's why the, um, you'll notice, and I saw this, you know, because I could see a lot now into the spiritual plane more than ever because of just my experiences and, and continuously going on those experiences. But I walked into the bathroom in the gym and I saw a guy there and he was looking at himself in the mirror. And it's easier to see who the real person is when you're looking at the person in the mirror because the person in the mirror is the one that's still trapped on the other side that the person will no longer unite with, still assuming that they are the reflection that they're actually seeing when in actuality there is so much more than that, so much that they would actually be afraid of it. So that's a part of the training. There is actually a point, if you're looking in the mirror, you stop seeing who you are, like you disappear kind of, and only your eyeballs are there. And then all of a sudden, if you keep looking, you'll start seeing other forms, like you're shape-shifting or something. And then if you keep looking, you'll realize it's based on what you're thinking, and that what's causing the shape-shifting is what you think you are. And then you'll be able to right then say, well, what if I'm this? And you'll turn into that person. And this is if you can keep your gaze straight, focus, See, so there's, there's techniques here is what I'm talking about. There's techniques to how that, that were known to how to, to get the body into the proper stage, and this is what we teach, into the proper stage where it can start climbing the ladder. But don't expect, and that's why we, if it happens immediately, you're going to go crazy. <laughs> like there's, right. there's not even a question about it. You're going to go crazy. It, this is not something to happen immediately. You don't get immediately a master's degree. <laughs> it doesn't work like that. So also remember, because how the computers are petaflopping and moving at these fast speeds, it also gives us this, oh, I got to move fast. I got to move fast too. And the faster the processors get, the faster the people get. The faster the processing, like you're dealing with a power plant or a planet, the faster the power plant or the processing, the faster the, uh, the, the uh, outcome from the power plant, right? And so this is how people can be harvested. So they're moving faster and faster and faster. And the obvious then doesn't become so obvious. So here's the deal. What happened is, is that, see, on the poles of the planet, which are actually controlled by the beings that live there in their polarizations, like we are the projectors. We the ones that manifest. So if it looks like a dodecahedron, it's because we start playing soccer ball. If it looks like a pyramid, it's because we just found that that was the nicest shape for it to be. If it just looks like squiddy glob, that means that it was still in its original state because that's what it looks like in an original state. They call it materia. 
it's formless. Anything can be made from it, but it doesn't have no form. So thus, it needs, well, actually it has no needs, excuse me. We need to sometimes shape, form, and fashion it and cut it so that we can understand it more, understand it more. We've done that to our bodies. We've done that to the animals. We've done that to the planets. But the actual process is, is that when we come into incarnation, this means in cars nation, whose car? Flesh. In the world of flesh. What is the main correspond? What, what is the big thing going on here? It's flesh. So when you're in incarnations, you already been through so many spheres to get here. Because you're going through portal after portal after portal. He's like, well, how did you get here? Well, I, I started in at Pluto, and then I banked left through Orion, and then I zigzagged back down through Sirius, caught the thruster, and then because, of course, ordinances, you have to go through Venus and before you fly into Earth. I took on the phi base uh, nature of the orbit that that star is hanging out I mean, and is putting out into the sky, and then I came in as a phi base life form. How did you get here? Oh, somewhat, somewhat the same way you did, but except for banking left at Orion, I kind of went more down to Ascalipas because I just heard that it was, you know, really, really <laughs> doing this. I saw this light. Now, let me explain to you about seeing this light. I'm trying to make it a little bit more entertaining, but see, when your parents come together, when they get together, they get in the phi base friction. Phi is always about conflict, but out of the conflict comes something. This is the whole key and secret to creation. The fire versus water versus wood, the paper, rock, scissors. All that is, the, those are the keys to creation. So when the parents got together in their friction, their opposites, because it's male and female, they're just diametric poles. Their opposites attract. But here's what happens when opposites attract, though. There's generally, before they attract, there's this buffer in between them. And then the dance begins. This is what you see Sirius A and Sirius B doing. There's a dance that as these stars are trying to actually connect because of their attraction, their diametric opposition is also pushing them away. Into, and then it creates like this bounding kind of jumping thing. And this gets so intense. And then at some point as they're slinging past each other and slinging past each other, then boom, they collide. That's the Big Bang. Synonymously, this happens on the physical earth when we finally make it to the sack. <laughs> and then during that friction, if it is to be an incarnation at that point, in, now remember, incarnation then uh, means, excuse me, not just incarnation, but a conception. This means that the being actually makes it into physicality. Now notice I didn't say that. There's, see, there's always a being created. And that's the secret to the incubus and succubus. If you have to, if you look into the dark mirror of the as above, so below nature of things, they tell you that every time someone comes together in this act of union, something is birthed from it. But many of them don't make it into the physical world because there's not an actual enough desire for it to come into physicality. And if you think about that, that's like having sexual relationship with a person is very strong, very strong love, but there's no intention to have a baby. But because all the passion and everything is there, when that light turns on, that incarnation attempts to rush to that light because it sees the hue that it wants in the incarnation. But then the light, once it gets into the tunnel, it closes out on it. And then that's because there was no desire, enough desire for it to incarnate into 3D. But in that space that it's in, and I'm giving you some really deep stuff here, but just hang on. In the space that it's in, in the tube, it's kind of lost and disorientated. And then it becomes an incubus or a succubus, depending upon if it was supposed to be a male or a female. So what happens is a lot. And then these, these incubus and succubuses, which are really like your children that have not been conceived, follow you around the dimension if they ever find you. This is like a, a son that finally finds its father. But generally, they never find you. And because that is a part of you, and remember, these, these are daemons. They don't look, they're not complete yet. Because they're a part of you, but they're being neglected, this then rolls into the metaphor of the Gnostic tradition about what Yadabeot, who's Yahweh, who's Jehovah's, who, who is El, who's Elohim, who is Saturn's issue really was, known as the child. And because okay. the, and go ahead. 
Uh, while we're going there, I, I hope to lead you back to CERN and what you think the potential of CERN is in seeking this Big Bang and how that might relate to the reigning Archon. Well, I mean, to me, it's, it's got Archon fingerprints all over it because it actually would be a project carried out with something that has always been spoon-fed in a certain tense to how it's how it's really progressed through the world, and that's science. Science comes from the root word of scion, or the, in the priory of scion. It is the, the embodiment of their entire agenda to hide the real identity of God, which is man and woman. Like the human beings are the supreme because we have this ability to do what we're doing now. There's, you don't need it anymore. In fact, you need less than this to become supreme, actually. We're kind of over-equipped in this tense. So what you're dealing with, though, is, with situations like CERN, just to bring it into full circle, is you're dealing with the whole process of the disheartened. You see, like, once, you know, as you're in the experiments, and then once you figure out that this thing is, this is the height of it, then once it took place, it all took place, as like I said, on a monochrome monitor. You know, it wasn't even HD, it wasn't 5K, it wasn't nothing, just bloom, and nobody even would know looking that something had happened they said, okay, we, they even thought, if you watch the video, that when they did it, that it didn't work. And then someone said, oh, it went through, it went through. And then everyone, yay. So nobody even knows what's going on. And this, to the internal consciousness, the person in the mirror, and in throughout time, all those different ones that you're separated from are more disheartened, is what I'm telling you. And this pulls them further down into the vortex. And because these are the bright minds, like, you know, this, you still have to admit, like, once you go six, seven, 12 years in something and you can read, like, I'm not sure if you've ever seen a medical book before, but there's quite a bit of terminology. And when you know all of that, the depth of your mind is vast. It's just been sent into a chasm of never ending nothing. Because think about it, if it's all founded on a lie, the only thing that they're attempting to do is prove that a lie is true. You see, so even at the height of what you may discover, it's only because you thought you discovered something, not because you really did discover something. If spirituality works totally different, when you find something truly in spirituality, you know you found it because it's inside of you versus on the, on the monitor. If I see something on the monitor external, I can't get off to that. And again, the scientific mind is actually designed to somehow get off to that. Like they were in a celebration, but it doesn't last as long as what it could be if you really discover that, again, that you are the dark matter. You have the Higgs boson in your presence. And then now also the knowledge that you've collected from realizing what's going on, once that flip, that switch is flipped, because the reason why I was getting into the earlier about these multiple U's in the mirror is because these are the zeros and the ones. And they're all separating. They're separate. They feel they're not connected. And so you have no power. And that's why I say you can't you got to start with the man in the mirror. If you can't face yourself. So then this is why, how you know it exists. And this is how, you know, many people will run from it for a long time. So they tell you you're not the body. They even tell you you have origins from the stars. They keep telling you all this different stuff about your whole makeup mainly that it's not just limited to this character that you're seeing in front of you and in the mirror. So what happens if one day you see something else beside what you're normally used to seeing? How are you going to react? So thus, because you know how you will react, you'll never see it. So this will guarantee that you'll never know yourself. You'll always think that you're this person, this human that's in the mirror because you're not brave enough, if you may, or courageous enough, if you may, to whatever you see that you really are to say all is self. This is the highest maximum so that it can collapse. This is like in all of the stories that they tell, you know, in the big bad end when the mini, when the big, the mini boss, the final boss comes out. This is when that whole showdown comes. And then when you just one blow and it disintegrates or not even a blow at all and it disintegrates. This is what we're talking about. It will build itself up. We spend most of our time in life building up this huge eidolon or egregor that we're going to have to fight when we die. <laughs> 
Because dying, you can do that anytime you want with certain substances. His flesh dies daily. (laughs) You see, so you can go through these near-death experiences, they call them. What does it mean? Just dying to one frequency and living to a new frequency. Changing is dying, okay? So that process, though, the real one, if it's your first time doing it, man, it's really disorientating. So disorientating because what immediately happens is you don't have all the weights that you have when you have a body that's not in good shape. Meaning that the, when the body is not in the high speeds, it's like a weight on you. Like you get sick and everyone's been sick before mostly. You know how it makes you feel. So when you don't have that anymore, the energy centers turn up so high. First, there's a joy. But then as the, the, the logic and the programming and all that stuff kicks back in, you start to manifest once again basically worlds that you don't want to really incarnate in. And that's called a loop. And this is where, that's why I say they cut holes in time during certain points of paranormal division, especially uh, uh, once their first level of work was complete, then coming to the United States, Oppenheimer's work with the Bhagavad Gita, figuring out how to turn ex- implosion, which is the system of the Kundalini, into explosion, which is the A-bomb, atomic bomb. Then he recites, I've become death destroyer of worlds only from inverting the pentagram. It's not the symbol that's evil, it's how it turns. So, so this is what it is. It's, it's like there's so much, but that's our entertainment part. When it comes to experiencing, that's really just your choice and decision. And because right now there's enough outlets open. I mean, there's there's people that will, you know, even take you into their tribe and, and, uh, and teach you their ways of, of how to connect back with nature. But it, it will not begin any other place beside nature. We can rest assured. And what I mean by begin is, remember, there's a preliminary stage. You know, we're having a lot of fun. Like, I had fun reading through, you know, Masonic works and Egyptian works. And, you know, I I could really, really get into that stuff. And it's entertaining for me. But don't confuse that (laughs) with the actual experience of what goes on when you enter into, quote, unquote, the spiritual plane. And and start dealing with yourself. (laughs) Because that's all you'll be dealing with. All of the extra stuff that you collect. So I see it like this. There's still a lot of work that needs to be done because of how much damage has already been done. Because when you put things like, you know, some of the latest horror movies, I don't watch them, but I have to every now and then catch a preview or somebody will be trying to break something down and then they'll bring something through on some footage that I'd be like, man, you've done more damage to us by showing us that five second clip of what you're talking about than just explaining to us. But what I'm saying is, is with uh, Wicker, or The Witcher, excuse me, coming out and Blood Rain and all the rest of the stuff that has been accumulated in the reality that highlights one side of distortion. What, how are people, when, and when accepting that already, when the energy turns on for them of creation, what are they going to create? And then on top of that, why people are talking about, oh, there's control, it's control, it's control. Nature has a control system too. And this is why most children do come out at least being able to experience some of their lives before they're already indoctrinated by their parents and whatever the parents have inherited from the music and all the other different things. So we have a compound situation going on here, but that plight is of the human species, meaning that sometimes we love to roll everyone in, the animals are with us and blah, blah, blah. We don't have enough data in a certain tense to prove that life is as minuscule as just this planet. (laughs) So right away, we can begin to determine that everything that is here in the frequencies that are here stand across the board. This is not going to be the last one and the only one. So we can get rid of that idea as the savior of everything and just start looking at yourself and saying, but what are you going to do in this? Because the stories, you know, the campfire is going to run out eventually, meaning the smoke is going to be coming up because there's going to be no more tales. But the reality is, is did you actually figure out what your own tale is? Now, look, and and even look, it's when you can turn all the words on themselves for meaning. What is a tale? The tale is the other vertebrae that are missing from the back. So the 33rd, which is a 33rd degree, but is also the third of of those that fail. What they're saying is, in the genetic modification, only a 33rd degree of this tale, the story, the, the, the DNA, whatever you want to call it, remains switched on. 
been through domestication, which is what happens when you cut off anything as tail, but it gets to a point where the, it'll stop growing the tail. Some of the Doberman Pinschers don't grow tails anymore. They don't always have to cut off the tail. So what I'm saying is, is that this is how you, can con you connect the cabal. Because none of this language, none of these words, these, I just want to say it like this. These people are not playing with you. <laughs> like this is so much, it means so much to them. See, we don't right. think nothing of it. Like, we just like, we don't want to go into nature anymore. Think about what's happening. It, it's like, we got the sleight of hand. It's like, yo, you take the computers, you take the iPods, you take all this stuff, and then we'll take the biome. Right. <laughs> you guys go work in the cubes, you guys go work in the buildings, and then we'll hang out in the acreage of the Black Forest. <laughs> Maybe we'll shoot, a, we'll shoot another, what are those, uh, what do they call it? The, uh, <laughs> what's the new one that they got coming out that's just sucking up all the time? Anyway, it's, it's one of those Harry Potter style movies, but it's, uh, it's a TV series, uh, Game of Thrones, right? We'll go oh, shoot yeah. the Game of Thrones and, you know, and <laughs> you guys just basically hang in the office buildings, but that's the sleight of hand. And now we don't want to go back into the biome. We want to stay outside and, and deal with the matrix. So this is the same thing with why we're more attracted to food that's already cooked versus food that has got all the energy still in it. And I'm not saying, think about it. I'm not, I don't care what you eat. I'm not, that's on you. I'll give you some advice, but just think about what's going on. And this is what I do. I'm not trying to judge myself and condemn myself. I just want to monitor myself and figure out what's going on because you, you'll find it there. It's not that far away. So what do I look at in the society? They serve you dead food. And then somehow, like, I would really rather eat maybe a, a, a nice French fry with the rosemary on it, with the olive oil. So we've even got healthy bad food now, right? I'd rather have that than going to eat the, the broccoli, in theory, in most cases, right? Because that's how I've been raised and trained and conditioned. But when you're conditioned then to consume death, you're a Saturnalian. <laughs> and, right. and, and, and that's... That's the end of it. So and then if you want to become a Venusian or a Venusian an alien or a Mercurian or whatever, the, just the forces, that's not, see, because we put the names on them. We said it was Venus. What they said, it was its gravity. And you put the name on whatever you want to try to describe it as, but it's already in existence. But the, the truth is, is that we are reflecting all of this. So here's the key. How do you diffuse the archons? From, first of all, yes. the archons could be no different than who we are, because that's the other thing. See, the, if, if something is separate from you, then it gets all out of control. Then it's too big and dangerous, right? So this is basically externalized powers running around terrorizing everybody, okay? So what did they say that they were? They were degrees of the arc. Now, when you look at your fingerprint, your fingerprint is actually arcs. So is the top of the head and the swirl on top of the head. These are degrees of the arc. It actually could be calculated there. That's how they know, or that's how the difference is with the fingerprints and why everyone has a different fingerprint because it's the degrees of your arc. So with the degrees of the arc, and you see the, the Holy Covenant and they call it the Ark of the Covenant and they say, oh, it, it's God. It's the embodiment of God because what it's saying is, is it's the body of God. It's Cadman, meaning a male, female. We're all male, female. We have a positive and negative side. We have a tilt, a slight 23, 26 degree or whatever, they, whatever wobble. And that gives us the primary. So you'll come out male because if you're wobbling more to the male side, you'll be male. If you're wobbling more to the female side, you'll be female. But the truth to all of this is, is that the organs inside of the body of Cadman are the archons. So the heart, the, the liver, the spleen, these were all known as the archons. And because they needed to feed, meaning that, what do you think you're eating for? Who, what's eating? You always say, my heart, um, when did you and the heart come in agreement? <laughs> Every single piece of the body is a, is a different frequency, so that lets you know that e each of them are our absolute. They have their own thing going on. And then when it comes into your body and you feel, put an entire field around it, you come into agreement with it. See, that, that's what was destroyed with all this stuff. It was all externalized and then man made it their worst enemy and then they locked themselves in their own chasm with fear. 
Like you cannot get, go anywhere with fear. It doesn't allow you to. So I don't care how big and bad he is or it is. Let's get ready. <laughs> you see, that's, how, that's where I come from. And remember, you have people still here on the planet where they have a lineage of being like that. No fear. I guess we're just going to die here today is their personality. You see what I mean? And this is because it, it's not introduced in their consciousness. So, but it needs to be applied on more of a spiritual level. Like, so what has to happen? You have to raise the jet. Where, where are you? You're inside of your body and you're tucked down into the cossacks of your spine. That's where you are. They call it spineless. That's the part I was saying about the cutting of the tail. This is not about occupying Wall Street. This is about figuring out who's on the other side of the mirror that's really you. So until that, it's like the sediment of all of the experiences that you have in the reality pile up on top of you as you're in the cossacks of the spine. And this is why I say Kundalini is in the base of the spine lying dormant. Who's Kundalini? No, it's us. We're energy, so Kundalini is us. Nothing is different than us, all itself. You have to keep the mantra going. So you're in the cossacks of the spine, dormant in sleep. This is like a sleeping giant. This is the titan in the box. <laughs> Every bit of the titan in the box. Think about it. So as the being is there, if, the, if, if, if they happen to get aroused, Right. See, breath is how you arouse Kundalini because Kundalini is it needs to breathe while it's sleep. <laughs> but if you cut off the oxygen. What happens first? The first thing this person does is they pucker their lower area. Because this gives them force for what they're about to do next, meaning that when you're scared, the first thing you do, if you don't fall away and dissolve, is you pucker your lower area, you close it. And you get ready to force with the power that you're going to use to save your life. Now, to show you how lazy you can become, a person's kundalini could become so lazy that it will never raise itself until it gets into that kind of position. Because it's literally an update to, to it's literally a, a alert right then. And it says, hey, you're about to die. It's time to start the reincarnation process. Wake up. Do you see what I'm talking about? When the body dies, the Kundalini's now got to go and find another body. You need to now go and find another body when you die. So if when you don't have breath anymore, it's an automatic symbol that signal that, hey, you need to wake up. And this is why breathing exercises wake up Kundalini. See, it's all there's a logic to the whole thing. But so what happens is, is that remember, because we're in the, uh, the because of the archonic states, meaning that they act like absolutes until you take control over the body, then you'll be mastered by the body. So every time it says, go eat this. And then when the gunads stir up and say, I want essence and, you know, that's the lower area of the body and, and then all the different parts of the body. Now they're in war. That's why they call it a universe, because what happens is if you drink something like soda, because the mind is conditioned to like soda, you just went to war with your liver. And then now the liver is going to say, man, could you believe they just nuked us? Basically, this is what we need to do. Shut everything down or put a grab some of that stuff, put it into a stone and we'll give him a liver stone. And then he'll have pain in the liver. And then once he realizes that he's it's the liver that's a problem, then he'll stop eating all that stuff. And then we'll be able to restore our kingdom. Sounds like a good idea. Make the stones. Then once that occurs, then the brain says, oh, he thinks he's smart. He just shut down. He just shut down the soda. This is ridiculous. I love Coca-Cola. OK, this is what we're going to do. I think red diet, diet Coca-Cola is probably the, the, the next thing that we can convince him is a little bit better for his liver. So let's see if we can push that idea. This is our cons. <laughs> it's going on inside of the mind. It can't go on anywhere else. They erect real estate inside of the mind. So when you get control of your mind, you have control of the archon. And then you can collapse their fields. That's what a prism break is. You slam all the chakras into each other. So the first one, when you collapse it, instead of hearing and seeing, you can hear, see. And hear, seeing is so much more useful than hearing and seeing separately. And it's because once you can hear, see, you see everything like tubes. Because everything that's making a sound makes this wavelength or tube then you can fly right through the tube and get to the origin of what's making that sound. 
Symbolically, this means that when you do this, when you collapse these archons, you bring them back to the Mount of Harmon. This is where we got the word of harmony. See, the same way we, they came in is the same way they go out. Everything functions that way. So on the Mount of Harmon is where the pact, meaning where they all got together, the pact was made. So this means that you return to the Mount of Harmon, which is harmony, you bring all the archons together, which are all the organs, and then you actually bring them into union, meaning there is an agreement that's made basically for one not to overstep the boundaries of another and to that they all generate with one prime, prime cause of ascension. This is called the prayer of Enoch. Because remember, there was still a man needed. And this is my man, it's just so, it's just such, it's so terrible that now we can't this will probably be the only time i may even talk about this except for in private class because you can't even really share this kind of stuff because people take it too far because of what they've learned already or what they think they've learned but again when they come together on the modern harmon they come back into harmony then one must take the prayer to god because if you read the whole text and that's why it's, it's it's a very encrypted book but the text says next though once the archon said okay we're done we're sorry this is a mess we need to talk to God. This is basically where the body says, oh my goodness, I'm really sick. What should we do? Because the body always does that. If you've ever watched your body, you can notice that you'll be partying, having fun. And then when you get sick or something, another part of the body will turn and completely against you and say, I told you we shouldn't be doing that. And it's because you have a lot of different personalities or archetypes inside of you that all want different things. So you have to learn how to bring them in harmony. And the only one who can do that is Solomon. OK, and the reason why they say Solomon is because Solomon is the judge. That's why the main scene you always see Solomon depicted is judging between whether to cut the baby in half or to get the baby to the other lady. And it's because you now must become judge over your body. But if you're in the Cossacks, you're definitely not a judge. You're a servant. So you have to rise Kundalini back into the crown of the head to sit in the globe, not in the attachments. You, then when you sit into the globe of the mind, then you can command from there. And then that way, nothing can enter the ports or the portals, hearing, taste, smell, touch. Nothing can enter into that without your approval. So they have to go through your customs, meaning the laws and the rules and the edicts that you've erected in your own body as ruler of a universe that you need to have maintained unless there be chaos. And, and any king... Khan, Kagan, or Cohen, which just means a priest king, one who knows about the world and knows about the physical world and the spiritual world. Once you actually unlock that within yourself, you become master of self. So now master of self has the same cognate as all the self as the highest maxim. So this is what happened. The combatants figured out, excuse me, well, yeah, what happened was is that the combatants figured out that the only thing that they could do to escape these laws that they had to create that was created in order to even get this thing going to escape the effects of them they would need to rise above them and this is something that now we're having to reanalyze everything that we're doing and really ask ourselves can we rise above this can i rise above duality can i rise above an archon can i rise above an illuminati of course i can but that rising above also means solve. It means you have to solve the riddle to this thing. <laughs> like you have to get in your mind because it's the way that you've come in. And now you've come into this comprehension and say, now he's of knowing. <laughs> what does that mean? Now you're endowed with the gnosis that gives you the ability to know right from wrong. You know when you're doing something crazy. And the truth is, is that it's not just about what you're doing. It's about whether it's balanced out or not. You know what I mean? Because people do different things. Like sometimes some people smoke. But smoking does do bad for the lungs. But are you on the, uh, what is that? The, what is it? Sodium, uh, what is it over here? Nat natrum uh, sulfide or so sodium sulfate. So that way your lungs don't get clouded with water and then start to mold because of the black carbon. Of course not, because you don't know the alchemy. So you see, what our ancients, with the ancients and our fathers and mothers, they, everything that they wanted to do before they even started doing it, they figured out how to undo it. That way they didn't become master by anything. 
And that's just something important to remember. I mean, it's a deeper reflection, but when you look at everything, all of it can come to your aid. Because when you, when you see it all and you see the vast vista of self, you do see it all on one knee. Literally saying, what do you want us to do? Why is it that way? Somebody say, I don't know about that. that. I don't know. It sounds like you're trying to be the master of it. Okay, let me explain it to you because it was really uh, explained in the uh, pyramid text very clearly. The, next, the real next plane, meaning not the other worlds that are built on the same designs and constructs or sometimes different ones, but the physical planes, not that one. The subjective realm, which is only where the big, big leagues can hang out. It's inhabiting, a, they say inhabiting a wormhole would be to the level of what you would need to get to to be there. So over there, everything is energy, and it's so unlimited, they're just trying to give it out. I'm, again, putting personalities on things that don't have personalities, meaning it's as much as you can take. So meaning the other realm is so full of energy, it's all about what you can take, because you can blow yourself up if you just try to take all of it. That's the call of the Big Bang. <laughs> So what we're literally saying here is, is that the reason why it does this is because it learns something that we have still struggled with, and that's how to give unexhaustibly. Generally, people just want to receive. Give me, give me, give me, tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me. I want, I want, I want it. They just want to receive. So what the subjective plane does, it says, okay, and again, putting a personality in something that doesn't have a personality, as long, whatever they create, it doesn't even matter because it'll be all from us then it will live through everything that they create because it's still us. End of the story. So you can work 90 years in building your contraption and I'll inhabit your contraption completely because I'm subjective. I've gave you every single thing that you needed to build it. You marveled in building it. I marveled at being it. And that's the whole big fucking difference, excuse my language. It boils into that truly. Do you want to receive all the time? Do you want to be downloaded to all the time? Do you want to be the receptacle all the time? Or are you ready to actually become an uploader and then actually get into the more expanded side of self? Or do you want to do both? Because me, anytime somebody says, if there's two choices and someone says I have to choose one or the other one, I always go both. Because I'm done, play, I'm done playing the game. Because I know that once I cover fully one direction, and you know what I'm talking about, I'm going to have to end up swinging all the way back to the other pole again. So why don't I just send two guys? And this is how we learn how to travel through time. We send one to the past, one to the future, and one in the present. That's how we triangulate. That way we know where we're at at all times. This is a practice. This is like Time Lord 101. You need a jumper and a catcher. You, do ne you never jump without a catcher. But you don't need anybody because as a being that incepts, this will be an inception because it's not taking place on a physical plane, you can send a pod of yourself to any stage of consciousness that you want. Meaning that this is the real time travel, the same thing that's going on physically as above, so below. You've encapsulated yourself inside this little semen as a male. And then that's you, a microcosmic version of you ready to head into a physical world. So there's a reverse to that. You can take an etheric pod of yourself and project it right into another planetary field. And within a period of time, because you're still dealing with space, it will either live or die where you sent it to. So your whole purpose here is to continuously build your consciousness to learn more about what you're experiencing in this reality so that you can survive. Survival is still the name of the game. Don't become extinct. Extinct meaning don't become to the point where you don't want to learn something or experience something new. Think about what we're talking about, right? Because what happens, what, what, how does an animal generally get extinct? It's because it can't adapt to this current environment. So we know then the way to, to really keep ourselves expanded, not what everyone else is saying, but what we know is truth, is to keep being more flexible with what we think we know and to start being a bit more non-biased about how we interpret it until we see the whole picture. And then once we get the whole picture, to put it in its proper place. Don't condemn it. Because the other thing is if you condemn it, you're judging it, then you'll end up pissing it off in a tense you don't condemn it. You just put it in its proper place. Children belong where children belong. And then you keep moving. And that's how you can keep moving through time without getting stuck. 
So hopefully that's enough for, uh, for everyone to have just something to reflect on. And I always say this, just think of it as science fiction. If it's hitting you too hard as being reality, we're never devoid of turning on, flipping on the TV and, and hearing one of these stories that they've been cooked up. And honestly, you can say that this is at least just as entertaining as something that will come out on one of those channels because obviously the movies kind of are redundant and boring these days. So I challenge people at times to just sit back with it, think about it, take yourself out of the whole body, out of the human perspective and for a moment and just listen to what's being said and then think about your existence here and what you're gonna do next, not these little rules and laws and ramifications that they got for you in this, what, 50, 60 year stint in what appears to be rather redundant. You know, like I would come out of here kicking and screaming and then always remember, do it when you have your vigor, if you can. <laughs> Meaning that you don't wanna wait until you're like 60 or 70 to be trying to figure this out. Because then the body, if it gets beat up too much and it can go in a mutiny, it's like you're the captain of the ship, but if you're not aboard anymore, who's gonna manage the ship? And then when someone else is managing your ship, the whole body is in hostile and at war with itself and then there can be a mutiny. And then sometimes people can't recover from mutiny. So this is just, I say that to just understand, it's a real thing. And so if you find yourself able-bodied and able-minded, see that as your gift and then start checking into this kind of stuff a little bit more. And obviously what Freeman's been presenting and what, you know, there's enough people and we have a nice directory of those people, but enough people from past to present, 150 years ago all the way to now, that each had a very unique perspective at how they were forced at times to see how it was, but they still budded in their time. And so, and that's what I've been personally doing, Freeman, is I've been going over a lot of old stuff that, you know, I may have cast away just because some of the names that were mentioned and things and saying, okay, so let, let's just take it out of the body for a minute here and then see exactly what they're saying. And then that's why, you know, and it's not new, but I'm doing this more and more lately, but that's why it's been like looking at all of this stuff, the archons and the Illuminatis and all this kind of stuff, it becomes really simple to solve after a while uh, when you stop uh, being immature in a certain sense, the blame game, like it's always somebody's fault and everyone's blaming everyone else. And then when well, you- let's bring, go ahead. Yeah, let's, let's bring it down to that because really uh, we're talking to a populace that is ready to take action against the oppressive forces that we are feeling all around us. We find that these <clears throat> bloodlines and those aristocrats and the elite um, have in mind uh, these archon powers of their own and so uh, basically what I'm getting from what you're saying is that we got to change from within to even know where to go without I mean to put it as simple as as simple can be yeah because the thing is is that it just all works on frequency when the frequency of the planetary system is not in the condition that's habitable for them they become extinct and these are just, when I'm saying them, I'm not necessarily saying one specific person or a group of people. What I'm saying is a type of consciousness that seems to be the norm and okay. Because it is true that, I mean, there's been a lot of delving into the occult and there's been a lot of things that have been created, especially on these immediate adjacent spiritual planes that are encouraging people to tap into more of the negative side of their consciousness. But the truth is to all of this is that if we could ever do anything about this, it will be because we activated if you, if you knew what you were talking about with those kind of forces. And this is why, remember, this is now, we're in, right, like a quarter, I would say a quarter of a way through operation, y'all not gonna do nothing. <laughs> I, I call it that because, see, if people are trying to, to come at these forces from a physical level at all, you're playing with shadows. Like, you need to go to the origin point, and the only way you can get there is to build up the frequency of your body. Now, it's unfortunate that there are groups of beings that live on the planet that encourage people to break, to tear down their frequency so that they can be above them. But the sheer act of that automatically lowers you. So these beings are also not that high on the totem pole either. In fact, they're not even in the middle part yet. So this means that once we go into the higher state of our consciousness, the real thing and that's why I keep telling me, none of this has to do with your mind. All this knowledge and stuff is great, but truthfully, it has a lot more to do with the actual experience itself. 
So when you go into those experiences and you drive your frequencies up high, you're literally pulling yourself up out of the lower frequencies. All this is very clear, very vivid. It doesn't have to be occult and esoteric. But until you do that, what's inhabiting those lower parts of the vortex are all of these kind of states of mind that really do become non-inhabitable for you. So first of all, what we're going to do, to, what could we do on the physical plane? Now, personally, you know, we're, we're equipping ourselves on the spiritual plane with spirit tech and the proper pairing of the equipment that we know how to use, such as crystals and magnetics, in order to build more energy in our field. But that doesn't necessarily mean the overall use of that is to go and have a Harry Potter battle with the Queen of England. <laughs> you see what I mean? This means that overall, when I say come over here, it's better, it's still your decision if you feel like that's better for you or not. This is how judgment works. You're, everyone's judging themselves. They're judging themselves based on what they eat, what they do, and what they know. So, because at the end of the day, when's the last time anyone really seen one of these archons? <laughs> And this is how you can build phantoms in the mind. It's like, it's, these, are, these are physical people that are carrying out a certain way because of certain conditions. And then they're making it horrible for everyone else. And on top of that, they're also crafty with suggesting to people things that are also going to keep them stagnant, which is in the protocols of Zion. It tells you right there, we'll, we'll let, let them think that they're, getting, they're living longer when they'll actually be living less. We'll, we're trying to help them when we're actually really hurting them, et cetera, et cetera. And this, is, this doesn't take an alien or extraterrestrial from another planetary system to do. This is simply a being that is caught into the natural stage of hoarding in battle and all the weathered stuff that happens in physicality until a, do, a do, more dominant frequency comes over it. There always needs to be some structure here. There's always going to be children learning here. But if the more dominant frequency, and this means if we vibrated all of us, or let's say 20, 30 percent of us, 520 hertz, the planet would come into harmony. But you can't do that from your radio or from some tuning fork. You have to be able to do it inside of yourself. The radio and the tuning fork are just external uh, uh, reference points to what you need to imagine inside your own imagination. So you can really turn that frequency on. So it's just all about suggestion here. And remember, the thing is, is that the good and bad doesn't mean good is going to win. Good and bad are black and white. They're two diametric oppositions. Everyone else is in the gray area. They're just choosing whether they're going to be a little bit of black or a little bit of white or what mixture of it. If a person was ever black or white, and that's why I said I wish you were hot or cold, because if you were, you would have seen the truth. Now I'm having to vom vomit you out of my mouth, meaning that if you had been purely tantric with, this, with compassion, or purely evil with malice, you would have seen the other world and, and the reality of what really exists. Because only absolutes have access to the door out because they've at least decided to actually do something full and wholeheartedly, meaning putting all of your being into it. So until then, we divide ourselves across ideas and states and time and different relationships we want to be in and vicarious thoughts. And so we're just really enjoying the separation of the energy more so than really getting into what, it, what you would be dealing with if all the energy came together. But now it just so happens that many people want to start to experience that because there's limitations to when you're in division right? Taking pieces of the pie and people want more of that now. And so this is, this is where we're at. And so when I look back off of, out, out of all of it, I actually see something that is, you know, it's, it could take us to sit down and learn a bit more from it. You see what I mean? And, and, and it's wild being here, don't get me wrong, but I'm not going to let it get the best of me as an immortal. You know, at the end of the day, the worst thing that can happen is still an illusion, that's death. The worst thing that can ha happen is somebody takes your life. But at the end of the day, you're like, what is that to someone who's already unlocked the mysteries of the universe? But their time to go and experience that. But if you're in life every single day and you're not expanding yourself like that, then of course there is something to be concerned about if you have other beings running around the dimension that don't even act like that. That's their prerogative or protocol, like the physical realities are where they want to remain forever. And then remember, the no, there's, when you want to know the real rules here, once you discover laws of nature, those laws are higher. So they can issue a whole edict of lower laws, have everyone following them, and just make sure that they never break the higher laws. Like, 
They will still send out certain papers to ask for your consent to do certain things so that they can pull it off on the spiritual plane. You know what I mean? Like there's just a whole part of our consciousness where we need to detach from all the dependencies that we have, but th that we're, we're going through mentally in something else being the real solution beside us. <laughs> you see what I mean? Like it has to start there first because the only time you're going to join a team that actually can do something about morphing and changing realities is when you can do that. Other than that, you're kind of annoying, <laughs> meaning that you're the one that still needs the whole thing to be performed, not the one that should be performing it on others. And then, and don't be fooled either. Like this is a timeline. So this is not the only planetary system. It's a smear. So as you get closer to the origin point, it gets closer as it pulls itself together to what perfection would be. So two or three notches degrees up the vortex, it's probably a wonderful world. You see what I mean? But when you get mm -hmm. down two, four, five steps down there into the hood, you know, it's gunshots, bombs, mortars, the whole nine. And this is how incarnation, they tell you about this. It can get strange. And let me tell you, I just want to finish with this because this is something that everyone needs to know because you would still, and everything I understand is like, still say, well, but why would it be that way? Why are people born in places that are so troubled and they have these hard lives? Now, understand this. When you get deeper and deeper into the vortex, the incarnations get worse and worse. Obviously, you're depressing. So what happens is, is that the reason why this occurs is because nature, nature has a hard code in the firmware that says if you keep experiencing things worse and worse and worse, you eventually lose the idea of wanting to be on a physical plane. And that loss of that thought equals the activation of your spiritual being again and you'll return then when you return, which is the actual direction, you take you'll go from centrifugal, centrifugal to centripetal. You'll go from Wittershins to Diesel. Once you turn back around, then you'll go all the way back around to the other area. Get almost there right when you're about to confront the great whatever and turn back around <laughs> and go the other way again till you get back to the bottom of the vortex. And this is how it's, it's like a clock that way. So what an adept is, is an adept realizes that's going on. And instead of going to these different opposite poles, actually finds the center. And the, finding the center has a lot to do with not having diametric oppositions, war, people that are warring against you, uh, things in your consciousness that are warring against you. Your, con your whole being has to be alleviated from that. And that's why any real deep spiritual teaching attempts to do that. Yoga attempts to do that. Meditation, attempts, all the purest forms of those, those, those uh, systems that's what they're attempting to do is to let you see that, man, you control much more of this than you think. You're not even giving yourself credit for how much you're in control of. So in that point, you're giving someone else the credit. So they're holding the currency. See, Jesus is in gods and all those. Those are brokers, Eve angels. They broker the energy. They're stepping down the energy so that way they can convert it to you. That's what I say. Let's convert him. This is all electrical stuff. They say, okay, so what are you doing? I, I can't take the whole concept of God. One shall not see his face and live. Okay, well, bring his son. <laughs> so what they're saying is step it down for him. The whole idea of being everything is a bit too much. Let's give him something small to start off with. Let's still let him deal with one son. And we'll kill the son too. So that way we can for sure make it really low. So you see, so it's all tests and trials that if you couldn't pass anyway, you don't deserve to actually be in existence. But non-existence is a space. So you see what I mean? So think about what I just said. If you don't like this, if you can't master this and handle what you're experiencing here and somehow wrangle it, ride the minotaur, if you may, and wrestle it down by its horns and all of what you would have grown to be able to do that, you don't deserve to be in existence because Non-existence seems to be the place that you would actually be more at home. But in non-existence, you'll never know anything about this. You'll never know who you even are. 
because that's what non-existence is. And, and these are the two poles. These are the two choices. And guess what we did? We chose both. That's why we have a dream world and we have a physical world. We are the marriage. And I'm telling you, there's a one side of beings that says that, oh, my goodness, this is the worst thing that can ever happen. And there's another group of beings that say, this is great. And it's always going to be like that. And if you happen to jump on one side or another, you're not an adept. Because what the adept is doing is it's not actually listening to all of the different voices and all these different things. It's centered inside of itself. And it knows what choices to make based on its experiences. And those experiences, what I'm telling you, and bringing it all home here, come from the patterns in nature. Because you know how they tell you, man, you might as well just learn from his mistakes. <laughs> this is when you can watch the patterns of nature, you can see where the deviations are. And then when you know where the deviations are and you never deviate, you nullify time. So now we've gotten at least to the point where we can talk about this. A couple more years, we'll be encouraging people to really utilize this more. And so let's, we start here then. We start, and this stuff is so factual. You can start taking it as fiction if you want. And then all of a sudden, it just comes alive all around you. And you start realizing it's everywhere and it's everything. Because that's what the truth is. So we'll know for sure when we have truth. Because you'll be able to take it and turn it all which way. And it'll unlock different things. And so and that's that's really what it is. And so I'm living inside of a mind that is working on as rapidly as possible, discovering truth, sharing as much as that as I can uh, from this vessel. I mean, still in realization that I'm converting it into a square right away when I'm talking. So I have to put more emphasis on things and put more of my intentions into things. So the tone and the vibration carry what I truly mean when I'm saying something to you. Uh, to the depths of where it should go so it shouldn't be taken surface. So if I say you are something, it's because I'm trying to teach you how not to allow things to get away from you, right? Like if everything is still inside of you, you've contained it. You've ate it. So it gives you a great position then to be able to go on to the next stage because you've not allowed it to run, run off and become some kind of monster or jabberwocky haunting you every time you close your eyes. So, you know, that's, that's it. You know, I, I guess that, that's, that's a beautiful uh, message to me, at least, to really deliver to everyone. And I, I just want to say thanks to, to Freeman uh, for being the conduit today of the message and uh and allowing you know this connection to happen so that others can hear uh what they already should know and feel and so that's a lot of times what this really entails is just sitting down and just feeling yourself and be like you know what i'm pretty vast anyway because when i compare you know all the other stuff that's around me that's supposed to be complex and how much time and attention was put into that and still look at myself and not even know what i, my, I am but i know what that is then I have to be something amazing. So in that, I always find motivation. I'm a pure optimist because it means that the glass is indeed half full in that we're yet, we're just coming into our full powers and our abilities. So we should have a really, really excellent continuum happening. I'm, Absolutely. I mean, I'm already in it. <laughs> <laughs> his name is Seven Bomar and his website is secretenergy.com. And you can check out the inner you, inner university, and start to learn these method and techniques that we all need in order to transcend this uh, situation that we are in. Remember, as he's been telling us, that we created this situation. It is one heck of an adventure for all of us. I personally am glad to be here and to have a sense of purpose in driving the cosmos into a more loving harmonious nature exactly. any last words seven <clears throat> big ship small rudder always remember that <laughs> i mean just think about it the biggest vessels in the world still have this little thing on the back steering them so this means that if it's your time to steer humanity and consciousness or at least the frequency and wavelength that you're around into the proper direction don't find it as unbelievable <laughs>
Here, here. <laughs> right. The world is way more mystical and magical than anyone has been led to believe. So uh, it all starts with you, folks. And there's no attacking on the front lines that you can do without first finding your many selves inside of you. Yeah. So, Sevan, thank you so much for this time. And I know you and I are going to work into a great friendship here. So, listeners, you can expect more and more of uh, this uh, work between Sevan and myself. Well, for sure. Definitely would love to come back sometime. All right. All right. All right. Well, you folks, get at it. Get to it. Get your intuitions into shape. And let's get that body moving so that we can all start to transcend and transition this world. So until next week, hey, stay happy. We'll see you then.